Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this tutorial, we're going to look at extending the DAO pattern to handle multiple databases in a kind of um, plug and drop kind of a way. Apologies for the amount of time it's taken me to get this tutorial out, but as you may be able to tell, I've switched to using a Mac and uh, it's taken me a while to get to grips with recording videos and transferring my data and all that kind of thing. So um, let's just take a quick look at the application we've developed so far in this series of tutorials. And it's this very simple thing here. Uh, and I can just add a, a name and a password and the, the details from that form are stored in a, a transfer object, which is this kind of person bean here. And we can add those person records to the database or query them from the database using this person DAO object here, database access object. And I've also, although I didn't implement it, I've created a log DAO object as well. Uh, I just want to point out that uh, in a real application, your database might be potentially huge. And I, in here, I've created methods like get people, for example. And in a real application, you probably wouldn't want to query all the records from a table all at once, at least in many cases. But so instead of that, you probably want to have methods that um, it, they could be called, for example, get people, but they might allow you to supply, uh, I don't know, some kind of um, query string that would then translate into some SQL that would get you a particular subset of records from your database. So you don't necessarily want to have methods that bring all the records back in a real life situation, unless it's just a very small database. Now the question here is, how can we change this so that it could work with multiple databases? Because we might, uh, we might want to switch to using an Oracle database, or who knows, you might have an application that uses different databases at different times, or it might try to use a MySQL database, but it might switch to SQLite if it's not available, or it might query LDAP, who knows. And the first step here is, well, this person DAO, and then also the log DAO, were I to implement it, have to be coded for particular databases, because uh, usually, even though I, um, I wrote this in using SQL and JDBC, uh, that there are some differences between Oracle SQL and MySQL SQL. For example, each relational database has a slightly different interpretation of SQL. So you probably have to write one of these objects for every different relational database. And if you're using something completely different, like a non-relational database, like text files or uh, LDAP or something, Active Directory, who knows, then you uh, obviously you'll, you'll need to completely rewrite the thing. But the interface shouldn't change. So it should, it should still have the same methods like get people and add person and so on. That's the point of it, that the implementation can change, but the interface shouldn't change. So the first step here in, uh, in adding support for a new database in this application is to recognize the fact that this is specific to MySQL. So let's just right click this class name, person DAO, and go to refactor rename. And let's rename it to my SQL person DAO, which isn't a very elegant name, but it'll have to do. And the same for log DAO. I'm going to just, this isn't implemented, but I'm going to right click and go to refactor rename. And I'm going to call this my SQL log DAO. Now, uh, I want to use the same interface with a different database so that the next step is to extract that interface so that I can implement it for different databases. So uh, I'm in Eclipse here, and this is going to be slightly different if you're using a different IDE, but most major IDEs will let you do this. I'm going to right click and go to source, or maybe it's refactor, yeah and go to Extract Interface, and I'll call this interface Person DAO. I'm going to select all the methods in, in my, my SQL Person DAO and click OK. 
Um, I don't really need to declare interface methods as abstract, although I don't think it makes any difference. I'm not sure. And then I'll click OK. And that creates for us a interface person DAO that just codifies the idea of a person DAO. And my SQL person DAO is now a, a specific implementation of this interface. Let's do the same for the, the log one. So I go to um, my SQL log DAO and I just right click that and go to refactor extract interface and I call this log DAO. Select all the methods and click OK. And now of course we can go ahead and implement different DAOs. So I could right click here and go to right click here on the model package and go to new class. I can have an Oracle person DAO and uh, click finish and I say that that implements person DAO and I just click the error and add unimplemented methods and now I have to implement these methods which I'm not going to do here but if you wanted it to work you'd have to do that and the same again for the log one so I right click the package go to new class and let's say oracle log DAO for example click finish I don't know if there's a quicker way to do this implements log DAO and just click the error, add, un add unimplemented methods, and I can implement that one. And now I've got DAO objects that are for like two different databases in this case, and I want to organize those somehow. If I look at my DAO factory, this, this has really become, because I, I, I use refactor, it's become a MySQL DAO factory. So um, let's also abstract away the idea of a DAO factory. Let's, um, let's right click this and go to refactor rename. And I'm gonna call this my SQL DAO factory. Then I'm gonna right click it again and go to refactor extract interface. And I'm gonna call the interface DAO factory as you might expect. And uh, I think that I should see some methods in here, shouldn't I? I'm not really sure what's gone wrong there. Let's try that again. Oh, it's because they're static. Well, you see, another thing that I'm going to have to do, which I, I forgot, was um, I'm not, I'm not going to use static methods here anymore because if I look at how I've been using this, if I go to the controller, I've been using the class name here and... Um, and then something like get person DAO. But what I want to do is I want to have a different objects here and I can have a MySQL DAO factory and an Oracle, my, uh, an Oracle DAO factory. So particular objects uh, that, are gonna, that are gonna be returned from a, a factory class and you'll see how that works. But basically the upshot is I'm gonna get rid of these static declarations here, get rid of those. And I'm going to right click this and go to source, uh, refactor, extract interface. And now I can extract the DAO factory interface. That MySQL with the D, three, four capital letters in a row looks really ugly, but never mind. Click select all on the methods, click OK. And so now I've got this MySQL DAO factory that is just one possible implementation of DAO factory. And another little refinement that I could do, I'll show you in a minute actually, because uh, what I also want to do is let's create a parallel class now, an Oracle DAO factory. So let's right click the model and I could use different packages for these different, like the Oracle ones and the MySQL ones. I could use different sub packages on the model, but for the moment I'll just, leave that. I'm just going to right click and go to new class and I'm going to call this Oracle DAO factory and uh, click finish and the, all the DAO factories will implement implement DAO factory that interface and I add the unimplemented methods 
and the implementation of this is actually now pretty simple because for person DAO it returns uh, a new Oracle person DAO and of course for log DAO I just need to return new log uh, new Oracle um, person DAO so I'm just returning the Oracle specific DAOs so uh, I, I let's save that what what did I do wrong here oh that should be sorry that should be log so I, I've, I've abstracted everything away behind interfaces and I've created my SQL and Oracle specific versions of them and the one last uh, little touch that I'm going to use here this is kind of a nice touch is I'm I'm going to change this DAO factory the interface because I want it to have a method that can return these different particular kinds of factories so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this into an abstract class and I'm going to say um, let's go to DAO factory well I used to have an F3 key but now I'm not sure if it will work so let's just click down here DAO factory I just want to go to the class and I'm going to change this I'm going to say public abstract class DAO factory now if I save that um, I'll get some errors. I need, I'm need. i going to declare these methods abstract so anything that implements the, this class must implement these methods. Let's save that and uh, do we have any more errors? Yeah. So now instead of saying implements DAO factory I need to say extends DAO factory and these are now implementing abstract methods and we should have, I think, one more error here in MySQL DAO factory. There we go. I don't know why the errors aren't showing up quite as immediately as they should. Uh, and now if I go to my DAO factory, my, my last little touch here for this tutorial is I'm going to give this a public static method which is going to return a DAO factory of some kind and that's going to take an int let's call it type and uh, if I can remember where on this Hungarian Mac keyboard are my brackets I'm gonna this method can now return me a DAO factory of the right type so that I can use this abstract class to get the right kind of DAO factory so um, to do that, let's declare a couple of constants. I could use an enum here, but it's it's more um, ingrained to use static constants. Let's say public static final int uh, mysql, and I'll put it in uppercase letters to make it clear that this is a constant, equals naught, let's say, and public static final int oracle equals one let's say and then in this DAO factory method actually oh yeah I see I've mangled that but that's meant to be the return type and it should be called get something like get factory would, would do the trick uh, get, I think get factory is probably fine or get DAO factory whatever you like really and then let's say here switch type which is the parameter that I've just passed in there and find the right bracket on my keyboard then I can say case uh, my sequel return new my my sequel DAO factory which is a particular implementation of this abstract class like that or I can say case Oracle return new Oracle DAO factory, of course, Oracle DAO factory, and uh, I could have a default in there, which um, could be, who knows, throw an exception or uh, return null or do, do whatever you feel really. So um, now I can use all this stuff and I can go to my controller and the way that I'd use that is so I, I was using this um, DAO factory class. I was saying previously I was saying DAO factory dot get person DAO. 
Now what I say is do factory up here. This is the abstract class, remember. Do factory dot get. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's right. So this is static do factory. So I need to say do factory dot get factory. I'm not really sure why um, this isn't working. Let's do control uh, command O, control control shift O, whatever it is on your machine to add the imports. And oh yeah, I need to. This is this is public and static, which is good. And uh, so I think that should work. I think I should be able to say get factory up here. Let's say type naught for my SQL and save and uh, add the import. Well, it's not liking this, which is oh, I'm putting it in the wrong place. Okay, it's been a, a long day, <laughs> although it's only like one or something. So I'm just going to just cut this, put this in the right place. So um, yeah, before I use this person DAO, I just need to get it. So let's, let's say, um, I, don't, I don't really need to have this private variable up here, actually. Let's just, let's just make this a local variable. And in a minute, I'm just going to recap this because I know this has been a hell of a lot of stuff to take in. So I've got Person, I want a person DAO is the basic problem here, and I want it to be a MySQL person DAO. So the first step is I'm going to say I'm going to get the right kind of DAO factory. So let's paste that in, and that will return a DAO factory implementation. Let's call it factory or whatever you like. And just add the at the import there maybe. There we go. And uh, so now because I've said no, actually I shouldn't say no, I should say DAO factory. Use the constant because I made it public dot MySQL. Now we're in business. So now I've got a factory that can give me MySQL DAOs. And I can say here uh, factory dot get person DAO finally. And now, finally, I'm using it, and hopefully it should work as before. I hardly dare test it. Let's just run it quickly. There are some errors in it. Uh, but, weirdly, I don't know where. So, um, well, I think, I think everything's fine. And I'm probably going to leave it here, because I seem to have some problem where I'm not seeing the error icons on this Mac. Uh, in Eclipse on the left, and at the moment I don't know why. I could try project clean, Let's see if that gets me anywhere. Just clean it. It's always helpful. And there's there's no error icons here. There's just a few warning icons. Let's save this and try to run it. No, well it's being it's being difficult, and I don't know why, but. Um, Never mind. All this code looks correct. Oh, it's the tests. Here we go. I was just being blind. Possibly you were screaming at me um, <laughs> to, to look at the tests or, or not. Just to get this working, I'm just gonna um, I'm just gonna comment this out for the moment. I think let's just put a massive multi-line comment in. I, f I feel that this tutorial has gone on long enough now, but let's uh, let's just finish it off quickly. So I'm gonna. Try to remember where the asterisk is on my Mac, and I think I've succeeded. There we go. Now save it, keep my fingers crossed. Is it gonna let me run it? Let's let's see. Why is the error icon still there? Oh, no, we're in business. So let's try adding someone. Uh, I'll add someone called Mike with a password of Z and Z, and click Create User. And we go back here, and yeah, so it's working. So that's good. So uh, that that was quite a lot of stuff. Um, 
you might need to go over it again, but basically uh, you just have to think that first you need your specialized DAO objects. Uh, so instead of having like a person DAO, you'd have a MySQL person DAO, Oracle person DAO, whatever kinds of databases you need. Then if you're having different kinds of objects like that, you want to have some kind of either a parent class or an interface. And in this case, you make it an interface. Then you do the same with the factory. You have specialized factories. Get rid of the static um, thing there because you're going to use actual objects of those factories to get your DAOs. And um, you can make them extend a single abstract class called DAO factory. And the advantage of doing that is that you give it abstract methods um, that, that the child classes have to implement. And the advantage of that is that you can then declare these constants and have a single implemented method in this abstract class that allows you to get the particular different kinds of factories. And that's all there is to it. You can make this even more elaborate, but I've just no desire to get into it. And uh, I, I don't think I've ever needed, to be honest, to even go this far with it. But um, you could add, a, you could have another layer. You could have like uh, maybe um, uh, like a relational database factory and a you know a hierarchical database factory. I don't know. You could have a, more more stuff going on in there. But I think that's enough for this tutorial, and that's enough of the DAO pattern. Probably what I'm going to do in the next tutorial is uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk a bit about um, having a structure to your application where you store stuff in memory and you just write to a database when you click like a save button or something. And we're going to use this model class because I actually created a, a class called model. The way I started off these tutorials was uh, by actually creating a particular class called model. I, I slightly regret doing that because although I am going to use it here, I think this isn't very typical, really. It gives you a very nice, elegant sort of start off point where you're creating your view and your model but the reality is that you could have multiple really these are just packages the view the model and the controller of packages um if any of them is going to be a single class it's probably the controller followed by the view but none of them may be single classes so in your mvc implementation it's not a given that you'll have a single class called model but i am going to use one in this um in this uh, series of tutorials because I'm going to use that as a kind of place to store data in, in memory as an intermediate step to writing to the database, which is a common pattern if you think of something like Microsoft Word or something. It doesn't write until you click the Save button. So that's probably going to be in the next tutorial. That's it for this time, and I'll put this code, I'll make it downloadable from caveofprogramming.com. Uh, and I'll also upload it uh, probably to udemy.com and maybe other places, I don't know. If you, if you find this course useful, it is free, but I ask if you could possibly link to www.caveofprogramming.com somewhere, that'd be wonderful because it'll give me better results in Google. And there'll be, there'll be more of these coming soon. We'll look at some more design patterns. So join me again for the next tutorial and until next time, Happy coding.